The appearance of risk is kind of like setting up a tightrope five inches from the ground. And you're like walking like you're going to fall. But you know if you fall, you're just five inches from the ground. I think you have to have something really at stake. Besides your reputation or besides being trendy or not trendy. You have to have a real need for what you're working on and a real desire to do an inquiry that is authentic enough to put you at the edge of what you know. When you're at the edge of what you know, and you have a lot invested in this process, you're already at risk in a way that, you know, maybe the thing doesn't look like art, maybe no one likes it. That's real risk. Real risk is when you see yourself reflected a lot less impressive than you think you are. I spent, you know, so many years doing physics. So when I left the graduate program, I dropped out at first and tried to sell my work in the parks just because I wanted to be, I wanted to be making my work and I wanted to put it out to the world and see what people thought of it. It sounds so simplistic, but that's sort of what I was trying to do. I, want, I was trying to be right with the work. I didn't have galleries that wanted to show my work. I, I didn't understand anything about the art world. All I knew is that I wanted to make work and I was hoping that people pay me something for it so I can eat. It was kind of like agriculture, planting carrots and selling them in the market. And I remember really thinking how crazy this choice was. But I had to see it through. I had to, I had to see where it led somehow. And, and, uh, and the only thing I knew, the only thing I knew for sure is that desperation, that desire to do it. And my whole sort of mental capacity of all this training that I have just was of no help. I couldn't think through the problem. I just have to, to be fully and be eagerly and desperately in search for this and, and hoping that something will open. And perhaps I was biding my time until a, a more comprehensive plan came about and eventually did. I went to Europe and traveled for a while, made work there, and went back to graduate school. So the, eventually, a plan came about out of that selling the work in the parks. I was at um, the Claremont Graduate University for um, almost 10 years, uh, from the moment I finished graduate school to uh, where my career got too complicated to try to manage a full-time teaching position. I lived there, I lived in Pomona for a while when I first got the position. And I loved the students, I loved the experience there. So it was a very formative period for my thinking, really. And it was a time that, you know, the galleries in LA were transforming themselves also. And the graduate students were very involved with that because they were coming to exhibitions in LA, coming back to Claremont and trying to figure out what they had seen or, or sometimes how they can fit in this conversation. They needed to sort of come back to LA, back and forth. And that was really part of the, I think it was part of the teaching of almost everyone I knew that you have to be looking at LA and what was happening there. But the positive side of that distance was that they could be on their own, uninterrupted if they wanted to, which sometimes as a graduate student is a useful thing to have. Each artist defines sort of their moral universe and the sort of the their ethical stance in relation to the work on their own. Um, I think that for me, art would be meaningless unless it had that ethical, moral dimension. Um, moral knows not in the sense of, a, of art as a vessel in which I put forth my values. That's not the morality I'm talking about. What I mean is a certain way of being in the world uh, and, a, and in the work a certain capacity to resist indulgence, resist the easy path. My mother is 16 years old. She's it's this woman going into this tunnel, which I know from the other point of view, from the other end of the tunnel, I know what she was about to embark in. I know what she went through. I know what it meant. So I don't know what would the point be of taking on this painting if I wasn't going to take on 
all the consequences of those choices. And to honor those choices, and by honor I mean being true to them. I have to recognize sort of my insignificance and smallness in front of them. I mean, I, I don't pretend to know much about them, even though I know them. I know them the way one knows one's mother, which is always at a certain distance, no matter how much you love them. And all of that has to be acknowledged throughout the process of working. You know, any kind of pompous, self-assurance, sense of that you're a master of something, that you're going to tell people what they should think, all of that is embarrassing when you are confronting uh, mostly doubts. I have been writing a book of fiction since 2001. They had taken a lot of time, a lot of effort. And some days when, I'm, when I go through periods of a lot of intense work on, I feel like this is crazy. Everybody, if, if my galleries or whatever will find out that I'm doing all this, they will think it's a total waste of time. Also, I have spent a lot of time, I still do, uh, giving lectures and teaching because it means something to me. So there is a way to look at all of that as possibly wasting time. Um, in the same way, for instance, that I, when I think of Velasquez was a palace decorator and that was his favorite job to do, I always think, I mean, he was wasting his time. This is a guy who should have been painting every second. But at the same time, I think that, at least in my case, I don't know Velasquez's case, but in my case, um, these things give me the, the sort of not only personal satisfaction, but also the muscle, the, the reconsideration of what I'm doing so that when I come to painting, maybe I'm not making as much work as I would otherwise, but the work is clearer and is truer to what really matters to me that it, wouldn't, that it would be without these other engagements. And I don't have, you know, I don't have a program in the sense that tomorrow I might not paint, tomorrow I might not write, um, I might end up just as a writer, I'm, I might end up doing something altogether different. All these things don't really define me in that way. Not even my primary occupation as an artist, I don't... It might not be like that tomorrow. Understand what you want to do, the work that you want to do. That understanding, what is your own motivation to make it? Because as a graduate student, you'll be offered many, many different ways and paths and opinion of what work is or not. And, and you know, you can, you can take a million different approaches and spend two years, your two years of grad school, trying different things or trying to match people's expectations or whatever you think is trendy. And unless you have a moral compass of what is it that you want to do, to do why did you become an artist in the first place? And, you know, this is not something you have to have super concrete, but have a sense of it. A sense of what is your direction and your goal from it. Then you'll be able to take in what CEU has to offer and the teachers have to offer. You know, towards your aim, towards who you are in that work. Rather than giving yourself outwards to all the myriad of choices that you have in grad school. The number one thing that, that I find responsible, uh, my, that I feel like I'm responsible to do is to be honest with myself in the process of working and in my engagement with people, whether it's a student or just whoever, because I feel that that honesty is precisely what is lacking so much in the cynical environment in which we move. And by just this small acts of authentic exchange begin to stop that sort of cynical current that seems to permeate everything.